Terraria, widely regarded as one of the best games ever made. It is one of the best selling games of all time, boasts excellent user and critic reviews and maintains a devoted and steadily growing community. This acclaim is well deserved, given its unique mix of freedom, creativity, depth and skill, offering a seamless blend of action and cozy playstyles. But you know what is even better than Terraria? Modded Terraria. Who wouldn't want more of one of the world's best games and potentially even an improved version? In this video, I'll delve into the realm of modded Terraria, exploring the finest mods it has to offer. I will be individually looking at some of the best ones and will give its biggest and most popular mod a personal in-depth review. Towards the end, I'll share my personal mod pack comprising some of the game's most essential and enjoyable mods thoughtfully designed to complement each other. But before we head deeper, let's go over the very basics. How do you go about modding your Terraria? Fortunately, the process is incredibly simple and accessible to anyone, though limited to PCs only. Sorry, console and mobile players. So, as soon as you buy Terraria on Steam, you also get access to the T-Mod Loader. As comes from the name, it's an expansion that is essential for loading mods. Now head to the Steam Workshop page and browse the mods. Subscribe to the ones you like, launch T-Mod Loader, and there you have it. It's as straightforward as that. Now let's immerse ourselves in the realm of mods. I am an ultimate believer that games should be player-friendly and convenient. Convoluted crafting recipes, confusing progression, unfriendly UI and demanding time-consuming tasks do not make a game challenging. Instead, they indicate poor game design. Although Terraria is an excellent game, it's not without flaws, particularly in the quality of life segment. Notable examples are the cumbersome and unfriendly storage system, time-consuming and grindy tasks such as constructing a suitable house for each and every NPC, or the confusing crafting trees that are impossible to remember. And guess what? All these issues can be effortlessly improved with mods. Quality of life mods are just a must for any self-respecting player. It's in the name, they increase your quality of life while you play the game. And I love it. So let's look at some of my favorites. Storage in Terraria is problematic to say the least. Dealing with numerous chests, all of which get cluttered all the time, being unable to find anything in all this mess, having just too many crafting stations everywhere, it makes the late stages of the game so annoying. Well, the magic storage mod fixes all of that. It lets you craft a storage network that will store all your items and is accessed from a single place. Everything gets neatly stashed in one single storage that has very easy to use filter and search functions. Simultaneously, it allows you to store all your crafting stations enabling you to craft directly from this centralized storage. Now that's convenient. Another issue with vanilla Terraria is that it can get pretty confusing due to its abundance of content. There's so much happening at all times that it is challenging to keep track of things, figuring out which items to pursue, identifying the next boss and remembering essential weapons can be overwhelming. Because of this, Terraria players often end up with at least 5 tabs open in their browser at all times 
just to keep track of all that information. It is basically impossible to have a proper playthrough without using the wiki all the time. That's where mods such as Boss Checklist and Recipe Browser come into play. With the Boss Checklist you can easily see the recommended progression. The next events, bosses and mini-bosses. It not only tells you what's next, but also provides all the necessary details. How and where to summon them, what loot you can get, and whether you've collected everything already. Convenient. As for the recipe browser, it introduces a comprehensive menu that allows you to explore all the game's recipes. It's like having an enhanced guide accessible anytime, anywhere. It offers information on which items can be crafted into what, shows which enemies drop needed items, what crafting stations are needed, and so on. In addition, there are plenty of filters and tabs here to make the experience even better. These mods eliminate the need for multiple open wiki tabs, providing a streamlined way to access crucial information right in the game. Convenient. Another thing that really bugged me in Vanilla Terraria is that some things are unnecessarily complicated. They are not hard, they are just annoying. Want to craft snow clouds? Oh, you have to be in a winter biome for that. This recipe requires a specific wood that only grows at the very edge of the world. The constant need to craft potions also becomes an annoyance. So why not add mods into your game that make things easier? Need a specific wood type? No worries, the lumberjacks got your back. Oh, you need an item that can only be sold by the traveling merchant that randomly appears with a random stock? Meet my friend Squirrel. Tired of crafting potions non-stop? The alchemist and brewer are your go-to guys. Convenient. At times, it might feel like these mods are a bit like cheating. Take ore excavation for instance. Getting all the ore instantly, that's clearly just cheating, right? But then you use these mods and you realize that slowly mining ores block by block isn't engaging gameplay. It's just tedious and time consuming. So why not make your life easier and excavate it? Just like that. Convenient. One of the best things is that most of these mods work together seamlessly. If a mod introduces a new boss, which after defeat spawns a unique ore that is used for crafting a new weapon, you'll likely find the boss in the boss checklist, mine the ore instantly with ore excavation, and learn how to craft the weapon in the recipe browser. Ultimate convenience. Just a couple of these mods can increase your quality of life so tremendously that making a return to vanilla Terraria after that will seem like medieval torture. Even small things like instantly falling through platforms instead of stopping on each one. Or the gravitation potion not flipping the screen and disorienting you can make a huge difference. They are the kind of things you might overlook until you've played with them and realized just how much smoother and more enjoyable your gaming experience became with their inclusion. I won't be waiting much longer. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. The most popular Terraria mod ever made. The biggest one. The Calamity mod. Calamity stands as one of the oldest Terraria mods that continues to be developed. It originated back in 2016 for Terraria's last update ever 1.3, and it's still actively worked on and updated. The updates are regular and notable. What I really appreciate is that they don't just add things randomly to the game. Instead, there's a proper game development approach here. Most updates focus on making various small but meaningful improvements to the mod. Addressing bugs, balancing items and enemies, incorporating new sounds and visuals. 
they could have just thrown in a million unbalanced bosses, weapons and armor sets, like many gaming modes do, and people would be fine with it. But no, they have standards. The developers focus on delivering a well-crafted experience, rather than flooding the game with content. This dedication to quality is particularly impressive, considering that Calamity is a free addition to a $10 game. This level of commitment and excellence goes beyond any expectations. So what exactly does Calamity do? Terraria is such an amazing game, that you can easily make it better by simply adding more. More biomes, more bosses and events, more weapons, classes, armor and NPCs, more of everything. As long as the quality is good, it will be incredible. And that is exactly what Calamity does. In simple words, it's an enormous expansion of the whole game. Basically a Terraria 1.5. It still keeps everything from the vanilla Terraria, but makes it better and introduces a plethora of new content on top. Currently the mod includes this vast array of content. The ones that I want to focus on here are 27 bosses and 12 mini bosses, a new playable class, a whopping 1800 items and 700 weapons, two full difficulty settings above expert and changes to vanilla. First and foremost, Terraria revolves around combat, especially boss battles. Boss fights are the core of Terraria and it's the primary goal throughout your playthrough to fight the next boss. Vanilla Terraria has 19 bosses and 14 event bosses. Calamity more than double that number. And they are high quality fights with their own sprites, sounds, AI, phases and more. Many of these bosses maintain a quality indistinguishable from those in the main game, and I am even not afraid to say that some bosses even surpass vanilla. Since its last update ever, 1.1, Terraria has always been divided into two progression phases, pre-hard mode and hard mode. Once you defeat the wall of flesh, your world transitions into hard mode. New enemies start spawning, new ores are generated, and new biomes appear. It is a major step in the game progression that opens a lot of possibilities to the player. Calamity takes this progression a step further by introducing a post Moon Lord phase. Yes, you heard it right. Moon Lord, the final boss of Terraria that marks the completion of your game, isn't the last boss in Calamity. Not even close. 12 out of the 27 added bosses and 2 out of the 12 mini bosses are fought in the post Moon Lord phase. In this phase, unique ores appear, new world structures are generated, new enemies spawn, the dungeon gets its second upgrade, and a huge number of new crafting options become available. To face all these bosses, you need weapons and armor, and Calamity introduces an incredible variety of bows. Weapons are probably the second most crucial aspect in Terraria after bosses. You always strive to get the next weapon, and getting it usually brings a lot of satisfaction, because most weapons are just fun. They range from a shark shooting bullets, to a prism firing a massive rainbow laser, Calamity looks at that, takes note and adds more. Colossal swords, sci-fi rifles, fire sizes, nuclear shark torpedoes, shockwave guns, a saxophone and many more. You're practically drowning in awesome weapons. At times I even felt overwhelmed, because I wanted to try everything, but there were just too many weapons in too little time. 
it's impossible to properly use all of them in a single playthrough. What's more, no class is left behind. Everyone gets shiny new toys to play with, including the completely new Calamity class, the Rogue. The Rogue class utilizes a unique stealth mechanic and centers around throwing weapons. Throwing weapons are exactly what they sound like, a middle ground between melee and ranger classes. Your weapons are ranged, but not very precise or distant. These can be grenades, bombs, axes, torpedoes, spears or even just bricks. The stealth mechanic is the heart of the rogue class, and it's very special. No other class has anything quite like it. While you're not attacking, you generate stealth. At max stealth you can perform a stealth strike, a special super attack unique to each rogue weapon. Some weapons become homing, others spawn new projectiles, while some just become stronger and faster. This class offers a distinct gameplay where you want to fight in quick bursts. You generate stealth by not attacking or, even better, standing still, and then you use it to execute your stealth strike, quickly dealing a massive amount of damage, before sneaking away again. This class works exceptionally well in multiplayer, where your friends can distract a boss while you generate stealth. For me, it's so impressive that Calamity managed to create a fully developed new class with its own playstyle, damage type, armor sets, weapons and accessories. The Rogue class stands as a genuine, unique addition, on par with any other class in the game, showcasing the level of depth and creativity ingrained in the Calamity mod. Calamity has a reputation for being notably difficult, with many considering it a much more challenging game than vanilla Terraria. And it is kind of true. Calamity introduces two new difficulty modes. Revengeance is a suggested way to experience Calamity and is designed to be harder than the vanilla expert difficulty. While death mode goes even further and is for people that really want a challenge. I truly love what Calamity does with the difficulty. You see, they are genuine difficulty modes. By that I mean that they are not just the stupid stat boosts that games often do. Even Terraria's master mode is simply a flat increase in enemies' health, damage and resistances. Nothing more. Calamity is better than that. Enemies don't receive across the board boosts in health or resistance. Instead, the mod makes bosses more challenging by altering the fights themselves, introducing additional attacks, changing their size, making attack patterns faster, adding new phases, stuff like that. A good example would be a King Slime. In Revengeance mode, aside from being faster, spawning more dangerous slimes and generally using his attacks more frequently, he also summons a crown jewel that pursues the player while firing projectiles. And death mode changes speak for themselves. This is the kind of difficulty enhancements I am talking about. Beating higher difficulties in Calamity requires preparation and an active use of skills, such as reaction time and attentiveness, rather than simple grinding. It is also a bit debatable whether Revengeance is actually more difficult than Vanilla Expert. For one, Calamity introduces a ton of new items, some of which are quite strong and often more powerful than the vanilla items you'd have at that particular stage. Also, Revengeance and Calamity as a whole increased drop chances for many items compared to expert difficulty, making it easier to itemize. 
even more crucially, the entirely new mechanics Calamity adds help a lot, rage and adrenaline. These are two new meters exclusively available if you activate either Revengeance or Death modes, and both are designed to assist you in boss fights. The Rage meter is straightforward. It increases when there are enemies nearby and decreases when there are not. The closer the enemies are, the faster it increases. When it's full, you can activate it for a significant damage boost. Quite simple. Adrenaline, on the other hand, is more unique. It builds only during boss fights and only when you are not taking any damage. Taking damage resets your adrenaline to zero. The payoff for maintaining adrenaline is a triple damage output for a few seconds, allowing you to defeat bosses much faster if you manage to avoid damage. It's a system that rewards skill and incentivizes improvement. If you become proficient at avoiding damage, then you can build adrenaline and unleash it to blow up a boss. An additional nice mechanic is that if your adrenaline is full and you get hit, you still lose adrenaline, but also you take greatly reduced damage from that hit. This means that adrenaline can be used both offensively and defensively. The last thing I want to add about the difficulty is that it is entirely optional and can be changed at any time. So if you started on a death mode, but when you saw the king slime, you understood that it was a mistake? No problem, change it right away. That's some great game design. Vanilla Terraria, though an incredible game, always faced some issues with progression. One significant problem is that once players enter hard mode, they typically smash three altars and spawn all of the hard mode ores at once. This renders lower grade ores like Cobalt and Palladium obsolete instantly. Why bother with them when you can go straight for Adamantite or Titanium, which are just better? However, even these armor and tools won't be used for long, because after defeating any mechanical bosses, you get Hallowed Bars that outclass Titanium and Adamantite. This progression seems illogical and Calamity steps in to address it. Instead of getting all three hard mode ores right away, you get tier 1 ores upon killing the wall of flesh, tier 2 after defeating the first mechanical boss, and tier 3 only appears after defeating the second mechanical boss, while hallowed bars start dropping only after defeating the third mechanical boss. With the addition of optional bosses between each of the mechanical bosses, Calamity makes this progression more logical and smooth. Each ore gets its own time to shine, making the progression feel more special. What's even better is that this change is entirely optional. If you prefer the vanilla progression, you can easily revert to it by changing one value in the mod config. Calamity takes elements from vanilla and enhances them or adapts them to the Calamity standard like this, making the experience better. A smaller example is expanding the arena in the jungle temple for a more comfortable golem fight. Why not? It is a thoughtful change that improves your experience. This kind of game design, where changes are made to improve the player experience without deviating from the core experience, is something that I truly appreciate. When it comes to Calamity, you just can't ignore the music. Terraria itself is very famous for its awesome soundtrack. Calamity continues this tradition remarkably well. It introduces a total of 44 brand new songs, and they are absolute bangers that elevate boss fights to a whole new level.
This is especially important when you're playing death mode and find yourself facing Providence, the profane goddess, for the 50th time. However, it's not just about boss fights. There are also incredible biome sims. It's honestly mind-blowing that someone crafted these tracks for a free Terraria mod. Absolutely incredible. Especially this. Equally astounding is the fact that the bosses, biomes and items introduced by Calamity aren't just some random additions, but come with rich lore. Every boss, every biome and many items have a story attached to them. They are all interconnected, weaving a grand narrative and creating a grandiose and cohesive storyline that you can follow. To be honest, I haven't delved into all of this lore myself, but I've seen discussions from people who have, and it seems that they really enjoy the lore and discover some intriguing elements in the narrative. Interestingly, Calamity is so popular that there are also add-ons produced for it. Mods for a mod. One of the most notable ones is the Catalyst mod, and another significant one is Infernum mode. Infernum introduces an additional difficulty that surpasses even Calamity's death mode. It also doesn't mindlessly boost the stats of enemies, but instead works on their AI, attacks and even adds new phases to some bosses. On the other hand, the Catalyst mod is a pure add-on to Calamity. It introduces a new ore that can be crafted into a range of weapons, tools and armor. It also brings new enemies and even a boss, that once was part of the Calamity mod itself, but got replaced. The developers have plans to add even more content, including more bosses and new biomes. Excited to see what would become of it. In conclusion, Calamity rightfully holds its place as the biggest and most popular mod for Terraria. It fulfills all expectation of a top tier expansion by essentially doubling the amount of content in the game. And all this additional content is of immensely high quality. Not only that, but it also brings improvements to the vanilla game that seamlessly fit. The fact that all of this is available for free is frankly still unbelievable to me. I can't give enough praise to the mod creators. You guys are awesome. And all of this is just a single mod. Granted, it's the largest and most popular one. But it's by no means the only expansion mod out there. There are a bunch of other impressive mods aiming for a vanilla plus experience as well. Notable mentions include the Torium mod, which not only introduces numerous bosses, biomes and items, but also features three fully developed and unique classes – Thrower, Healer and Bard. Fargo's Souls mod adds a plethora of remarkable equipment in the form of enchantments and souls accessories. It also introduces a new difficulty, Eternity mode, that reworks many aspects of the game and provides a compelling challenge. 
The Spirit Mod is a comprehensive vanilla expansion that adds everything one could expect. New items, armor sets, bosses, events, enemies, biomes, reworks to vanilla and more. Besides these mods that just try to expand on the vanilla Terraria experience, there are also those that go above and beyond that and carve out their own unique identity. The Stars Above, for instance, manages to add content such as cutscenes, the ability to travel to other worlds, grandiose ultimate abilities, and some incredibly cool, albeit slightly complex, weapons. And the highlight your own anime companion girl with over a thousand lines of dialogue about everything that happens in the game. And there's still more. Starlight River stands out as an all-around incredible mod that can transform Terraria into something entirely different. See for yourself the extraordinary artwork and uniquely crafted boss fights that it adds. And this is just an alpha version of this mod. Can you imagine the magnificence it will achieve at full release? I can't wait. These mods are exceptionally well made and sought out. Many of them have undergone years of development with dedicated teams, involving dozens of contributors. They may not reach the same scale, depth and popularity as Calamity, but they still introduce excellent content. Even though Calamity is considered the best, I highly recommend exploring other modes and giving them a try. They are certainly worth your time. Now here's the wildest and most unbelievable aspect of all this. Most of these mods can be used together. You install them and they just work. Yes, most of them merely function together. In the sense that they don't cause the game to crash or bug out, but are clearly not designed around one another. And using them together usually would end up with just an unbalanced mess. But actually, some of them are designed with one another in mind. They come with compatibility patches and features, adjust their balance around each other, and introduce new content that complements one another. One striking combination of compatible mods that I found are The Stars Above, Calamity, and Fargo's Souls. These mods try not to compete with each other, but rather complete. The Stars Above adds rogue-type damage to their unique mechanics, and characters from the mod even engage in dialogue about bosses from Calamity and Fargo's Souls. Fargo's Souls takes it a step further by making countless balance and progression changes to ensure these mods work seamlessly together. It even introduces accessories designed solely for the Calamity mod. Just how bonkers is that? Considering all of this, I've taken it upon myself to create a mod pack centered around these compatible mods. This pack includes most of the mods discussed in this video, and many more, 49 mods in total. The majority of these are small quality of life mods aimed at enhancing your experience, along with a couple of visual mods just for the fun of it. However, the main attraction consists of the three major content mods and some add-ons for Calamity, all seamlessly working together and interacting. The mod pack introduces a whopping 44 bosses and 20 mini-bosses, along with new mechanics, classes, NPCs, biomes, 
and an uncountable, literally I can't count them all, number of new items, weapons and armor. The beauty of it all is that this mod pack is also fully functional in multiplayer. I'll be completely honest here. This mod pack is not perfect. Expecting totally different mods developed independently by various people to flawlessly work together is just a bit unrealistic. Elements introduced by the stars above, for example, can be quite distinctive and may often look out of place in the calamity. Inferno mode does not have any impact on the bosses from non-Calamity mods. Having both Eternity and Calamity difficulties activated at the same time can be way too overwhelming. And in general, the balance often can be thrown out of the window, even with all of the compatibility functions. But it still can be simply fun to experience all these mods at the same time. I even will tell you a small secret that may help. You can use this mod pack as a neat place to pick and choose the mods that you personally enjoy and want to see in your game. There's no need to hit the subscribe to all button, even though it might be tempting. Also, if you think there are incredible mods I've overlooked, please tell me in the comments. I promise to check out each mod. And if they're genuinely good, I'll definitely add them to the mod pack. You heard me state that these mods are compatible with multiplayer, and as you may have noticed from the footage, I've played Terraria with my friend. But how well do all these mods work together in co-op, and is it worth your time? I have considerable experience with modding games, and I can confidently say that multiplayer and modding typically don't go hand in hand very well. Most of the time problems and troubleshooting are just expected. Choosing mods for a few days and creating your own perfect mod pack only for it to refuse to work in multiplayer is a common occurrence. But not here. Terraria and T-Mod Loader provided one of the best experiences I've ever had with any games. We simply installed the same mods and started playing. No disconnects, no errors, no corrupted saves and no desynchronizations. We even added a few small mods mid-playthrough and it worked as perfectly as before, I can't command it enough. Of course, it is not ideal. It just can't be. One of the most noticeable issues is the balance. Mods are not well balanced around multiplayer, especially considering that co-op in Terraria opens the door for an easy cheese tactic during boss fights. If one player dies, the others just need to survive for 15 seconds so that the fallen player can return to the fight. Because of this, there can be difficult fights where you are dying constantly, but you live just long enough for your partner to return. This may feel rather cheesy and undoubtedly makes the game easier. But what can you do? The answer is obviously to add even more mods. The better multiplayer mod disables respawning during boss fights, while the team spectate allows you to spectate your teammates after death. These additions raise the stakes significantly and prevent fights from being cheesed. Both mods are included in the collection. Admittedly, there are some concerns that 
can't be addressed as easily. One such concern is that traveling between worlds in The Stars Above doesn't function properly in multiplayer and tends to crash the game. The best workaround available is to activate the fix provided by the mod developers, which just disables world travel and instead drops all items from those worlds for each player. Lame, but it's the price you pay for playing with your friends. Another noticeable problem is that each player constantly generates projectiles during fights. This can lead to chaotic screens, like this one. There is no dodging here, you can only rely on your luck. Aggro can also be a concern in multiplayer. For one, some bosses are not designed for cooperative play, and not being the primary target can feel very bizarre. Additionally, enemies may struggle to determine which player to attack, resulting in erratic behavior, including teleportation. I can continue, as there are a bunch of things like that, but I won't. Despite its imperfections and existing problems, the modded multiplayer experience is still one of the best in the whole of gaming. Considering the wealth of high-quality content it introduces and its overall performance, I can't complain, only praise. The Terraria modding community stands out as one of the best modding communities I've ever seen, and I've seen many. Tmod Loader is one of the best mod launchers that I have ever used, and I've used plenty. The overall experience it offers is tremendous, and something I believe the vast majority of players would deeply enjoy, especially at the modest price of $5 while discounted. It is just unbelievable that this game exists in the same world as the rehearsed Call of Duty re-releasing each year with a 5-hour campaign for $70. Vanilla Terraria alone offers at least two playthroughs of over 30 hours each. But when you introduce mods and consider the content they bring, their playability skyrockets to absurd levels. This small $5 game can keep you engaged for years to come. The community only continues to grow, with more fantastic mods like Starlight River being developed. Updates to existing mods such as Calamity are also on the horizon. I am amazed, stunned, astonished, and incredibly thankful to everyone who is a part of this community. I hope that through this video I've also become a part of this community and helped it thrive even more. I am also incredibly thankful to you, my dear viewer, for watching this video. I invite you to become a part of my community by leaving a comment, a like or even subscribing to the channel. Really hope to see you in my next video. Have a good one.